When I met her, I really thought this was fate. I went to a high-end restaurant with my mother. What I heard there was unmistakably my husband's voice. He was having a meal with a well-dressed family of strangers. Father-in-law, mother-in-law, please, give me your daughter. The husband stood up and bowed. I, who had been watching from a little distance, understood everything. Oh, I see. That's how it is. Well, I have something in mind, too. I walked confidently towards their table and declared, Yes, I'll offer my husband as well. Huh? The family's eyes widened. As I saw my husband's face turn pale, I couldn't help but curl the corners of my lips. My name is Charlotte, a 30-year-old working wife. I originally worked as an office worker in a small to medium-sized company. As my marriageable age approached and I still didn't have a boyfriend, I decided to try attending a matchmaking party. It was there that I met Benjamin, who would later become my husband. He was a salaried worker at a large corporation, and I was quite impressed by his first impression. Later, Benjamin confessed his feelings to me, and we began dating. After a few dates, I started to notice something that bothered me. For example, when the two of us went out to eat, and the bill was $57. It's fine here, I'll pay. Benjamin stopped me from taking out my wallet when I tried to. Thinking he would treat me to the meal, I thanked him at the time. But after we parted ways, I received a message from him on WhatsApp. The meal today cost $30, right? You can give it to me next time we meet. I was, um, surprised. It would have been better if he had told me that at the time. And now that I think about it, I ended up paying more than half of the bill. Even though Benjamin ordered more food and drinks. But then again, I felt awkward complaining about such things. I had been paying for more than half of our date expenses every time. I did have those kind of complaints, but Benjamin was very kind to me. Aside from being frugal with money, he was an ideal partner for me. After a year of dating, Benjamin proposed to me, and I happily accepted. Later on, we had a wedding ceremony. My father and mother were also overjoyed and gave us their blessings. As their only daughter, who had been cherished and raised with love, seeing them happy was more important to me than anything else. After discussing it with Benjamin, I decided to continue working even after marriage. Surprisingly, Benjamin had initially wanted me to quit my job. I don't want people to think I'm a useless man who can't even support his wife. So are you saying I should become a full-time homemaker? Should we rely solely on your income for our household? Well, maybe after we've been married for a while. I could always switch to a job with a higher salary. So you don't want to spend money, but you want to keep up appearances. I sighed and told Benjamin. I've been working at my current job for a long time. Even if I switch jobs, there's no guarantee that I'll get a higher salary than what I'm earning now. Can't we just let me continue working at my current company without trying to show off unnecessarily? Benjamin didn't seem entirely satisfied, but I pushed through and decided to keep working. And so our newlywed life began, but one day Benjamin said the following. Even after marriage, we can keep our finances separate, and we can split the living expenses, right? Let's each contribute $1,400 to the household budget every month. Huh? I was a bit surprised. Benjamin worked for a top-tier company while I was in a small to medium-sized enterprise. His income was likely significant higher than mine. If I put $1,400 into the household, I wouldn't have much left for myself. A splitting the expenses evenly is tough. I'd liked it to be reduced a bit. I appealed to Benjamin in that way, but he didn't lend an ear. Are you planning to rely on me entirely? I don't think of it that way, but this just feels really unfair. It's not like that. I want to save money too, so make sure to contribute the $1,400. In the end, I ended up complying with that condition. Even though our finances were split evenly, Benjamin often claimed to be too busy and hardly did any housework. For over a year after our marriage, I had been doing all the household chores by myself. I had complaints, but there were also a strange belief that as a wife, it was my duty to do them. I continued to bear the burden of all the household chores while contributing most of my income to the family. Then one day, I received a call from my mother informing me that my father had been in a car accident. I rushed to the hospital, but by the time I arrived, it was too late. My father had already passed away. Both my mother and I were in tears, and our emotions couldn't keep up with a sudden loss. Despite our overwhelming grief, we proceeded with the funeral arrangements. 
Somehow we managed to get through the farewell ceremony, and then we were back home. My mother and I were utterly exhausted. Benjamin made me a cup of tea. Oh, thank you for your consideration, Benjamin. Benjamin responded with a polite smile, saying, No, it's only natural. After finishing my tea, I called out to my husband. Benjamin, it's time to go. Huh? Already? Benjamin appeared, surprised for some reason. Why are you surprised? It's late and I'm tired. No, I mean, you haven't had an important conversation with your mother yet, right? An important conversation? Aren't we going to talk about your father's inheritance? Both my mother and I were surprised by this. The funeral had just ended, and we hadn't even considered such matters. Besides, it wasn't something Benjamin should bring up. Your father had a good job, and if it's an accident, there should be a lot of insurance money, right? Charlotte, how much will you get? Benjamin said this with gleaming eyes, and I felt dizzy. I noticed my mother's puzzled expression and panicked. We can discuss that another time. Let's just go home for now. I left my family home with a dissatisfied Benjamin in tow. On the way back, I scolded him for his impoliteness, but he didn't seem to agree. Come on, Charlotte. We're married, so it's natural to be concerned, right? My mother hasn't even recovered yet, and you're rushing things. Besides, my father's inheritance doesn't concern you, does it? What? Are you planning to keep the inheritance all to yourself? Suddenly, Benjamin glared at me, and I sighed deeply. Keeping it all to myself, the inheritance is separate property in the first place. What I receive, I'll save for our future. What's that supposed to mean? I was thinking of going on a big trip. Huh? Why would you use my father's inheritance for luxury? You're so annoying. I didn't think you were this stingy. I thought to myself, wondering who was the stingy one, as I held my head. Afterward, I had a discussion about the inheritance with my mother. My father's inheritance was a substantial amount, but following my mother's advice, I decided to graciously accept it. Ultimately, I put it in an account under my own name and didn't include it in our household finances. It seemed that Benjamin was dissatisfied with this and persistently tried to find out the exact amount, but I brushed it off casually. Benjamin started coming home late around the time my father's memorial service settled down. He claimed his work had become busier and would often work overtime on weekdays. Even on precious weekends, he would either have to work or simply go out. However, because I was also busy with my job, I didn't pay much attention to it. I still took care of all the household chores, but by now I had become accustomed to it. Around the time when Benjamin and I were approaching our two-year anniversary since getting married, I spoke to him when he came home late. Benjamin, thank you for your hard work. I have a little request. What is it? What do you want? Undaunted by Benjamin's apparent reluctance, I continued. Isn't next Saturday our wedding anniversary? I want us to go out together after such a long time. Is that what this is about? Forget it, forget it. I have work that day too. Benjamin replied, almost dismissively. Why are you saying that? Benjamin, you've been acting strange lately. You come home late and it feels like you've become cold towards me. With tears in my eyes, I looked down and he sent me a cold gaze. You're so annoying. I'm starting to hate being with you. Huh? I don't earn much, and you're keeping the inheritance all to yourself. The food is terrible, and it feels like there's no point in being married anymore. What? Benjamin, what are you saying? I'm seriously considering divorce. If you don't like that, then you should reflect on yourself as a wife. Benjamin spat out these words and went to the bedroom. The word divorce presented suddenly, made my heart race like a runaway train. Why did Benjamin suddenly mention divorce? Something is not right. At that moment, I was shocked, but also began to feel suspicious of my husband's behavior. After that, Benjamin stopped talking to me entirely. While enduring such a life, I received a message from my mother. Charlotte, are you doing well? Ah. Recalling Benjamin's recent behavior, I couldn't give my mother a positive response. Then, as if she had sensed it, my mother said, It seems like something's bothering you. How about we have a meal together, just the two of us, like old times? Yes, I love that. I'm free on Saturday. Oh, isn't that the day of your anniversary? Yes, it is, but Benjamin seems to be working, so it's fine. In response to my answer, my mother waited for a moment before saying, I understand. Well, I'll make a reservation at a nice place then. Look forward to it. Thank you, Mom. I was grateful for my mother's consideration. 
and then came Saturday. I had arranged to meet my mother in the city during the day. As I followed her instructions, we ended up at a famous high-end restaurant. Mom, is it okay to go to such an expensive place? Sometimes it's fine, Charlotte. You seem a bit down, so I decided to splurge. My mother smiled at me, and I returned the smile. That's right. Today, let's forget about Benjamin and enjoy a meal with my mother. As I was about to take my seat, I froze at the sight in front of me. Sitting diagonally across from me, with his back turned to me, was a man in a suit. He looked exactly like Benjamin. At that table, there was a young man and woman, as well as an older, well-dressed couple facing each other and sitting down. As I couldn't take my eyes off them, I overheard their conversation. We never thought Scarlet would bring such a wonderful man with her. Yes, Benjamin seems like a really great guy. I was shocked by the older couple's words. Did they just say Benjamin? Then, Benjamin spoke up politely and said something unexpected. I met her, and I seriously thought that this was fate. The voice was unmistakably Benjamin's. Please, father, mother, grant me your daughter. Benjamin stood up and bowed, and at that moment, I realized everything. Ah, I see. So that's what it was. In that case, I have my own plans. I confidently walked up to their table and said, Yes, I'll give you my husband. Huh? The eyes of that family widened significantly. Without a doubt, my husband Benjamin was there. Seeing his pale face, I smirked at the corner of my lips. Next to Benjamin sat a petite and cute young woman named Scarlet. She seemed surprised as well. So the elderly couple must undoubtedly be Scarlet's parents. Then Scarlet's father cleared his throat and said, Um, who might you be? I don't quite understand what you're saying. I calmly responded, My name is Charlotte. I am Benjamin's wife. There was a moment of silence at the table. Benjamin still looked pale and hadn't said a word. That's when Scarlet grabbed Benjamin's arm and shook him. Wife? What does this mean? Hey, Benjamin, what's going on? Then Benjamin had a startled expression on his face. Th this is not... What's going on, Benjamin? Under the stern gaze of Scarlet's father, Benjamin finally said this. This woman is my stalker. She's a crazy person who became infatuated with me and delusionally thinks she's my wife. Please, don't be deceived, everyone. At this point, the way people around me looked at me changed drastically. Just as I was about to angrily speak up, a quiet voice resonated. Who's calling someone's daughter a crazy stalker? Unbeknownst to me, my mother had appeared next to me. M mom Benjamin inadvertently blurted out. Benjamin, what do you mean by mom? Isn't this person the stalker? When Scarlet confronted him, Benjamin stammered. Ugh. Then my mother calmly stated, Nice to meet you. I am this girl's mother and I am Benjamin's mother-in-law. It is a fact that my daughter and Benjamin are married. What? Really? My mother extended her phone screen to show Scarlett's shocked mother. On the screen were photos from our wedding. The two of them got married two years ago and they haven't separated. What? Scarlett and her parents were fixated on my mother's phone screen and Benjamin finally began to tremble. What is this? You were married to her? Scarlett grabbed Benjamin's collar and started shaking him. No, I was planning to break up with her soon. It's true. Please, believe me. So, does this mean that she is your wife without a doubt? Scarlet's father inquired in a low voice. Oh, uh, well, yes, that's right. Finally, Benjamin admitted the truth, and Scarlet and her parents were left in shock. I followed up with, You can marry or do whatever you want, but before that, divorce me. Be prepared to pay a hefty alimony. Sh Charlotte, it's just... Next, I turned to Scarlet's family and said, Scarlet didn't seem to know that he was married, so I won't ask for alimony. If you want to marry him, please go ahead. This is no joke. Scarlet yelled this out, then stood up and threw a generous amount of water on Benjamin's head. You traitor. You fooled both me and your wife, didn't you? You're such scum. Get lost. Scarlet grabbed Benjamin by the collar and shouted. Then she lowered her head to me and left the restaurant. Scarlet's parents also shook their heads and got up. Benjamin, I'm disappointed in you. I'll have to cancel our business dealings. Mr. President, please, wait a moment. 
Benjamin tried to stop them for a moment, but they shrugged him off and continued following Scarlet. Left alone at the table, Benjamin remained soaking wet and dumbfounded. I then snapped at him. I bet you chose Scarlet with money, just like this penny pincher. People like you should go to hell, you scumbag. Then, leaving Benjamin behind like an empty shell, my mother and I also left the restaurant. Later on, the divorce between Benjamin and me was finalized. I received $20,000 in alimony. In terms of property division, we settled on a 70% share for me and 30% for Benjamin. Benjamin's affair partner, Scarlett, turned out to be the daughter of a business partner. Scarlett and her parents were furious, and Benjamin was also asked for alimony by Scarlett. Benjamin depleted his savings, paying alimony to both me and Scarlett. Moreover, Scarlett's father terminated the business dealings with Benjamin's company, resulting in his dismissal. Unemployed, Benjamin currently lives in a rundown apartment. It seems he is desperately searching for a new job. However, this story has spread as a rumor, making it difficult for him to find employment in the same industry with a similar high salary. He probably won't be able to secure a job with the same high pay as before. On the other hand, I left the house where I lived with Benjamin and returned to my parents' home. To commemorate the divorce's finalization, my mother and I are discussing having a luxurious lunch that we couldn't have at that time. From now on, I want to work hard at my job and create a positive outlook on my life. 